Okay, students, today we'll talk about tutorial six. So what is happening here in tutorial six? So first question here, the first question that they're asking us is, you are required to attempt the following questions on concept question number one. So systematic versus unsystematic risk. Describe the difference between systematic risk and unsystematic risk. So very simple. So first of all, you need to know the difference between systematic versus unsystematic. What is systematic risk? All right. What is systematic risk? Systematic risk, it's a risk that cannot be diversified. Okay, cannot diversify. Why? So this is actually your market risk. So what is market risk? Market risk is basically influenced by uh, a factors that are uh, affecting the market. Again, global economic growth, for example, like the pandemic now, that's actually uh, created a systematic risk because this pandemic is uncontrollable and affect every single uh, industry in the world, all right? So that's systematic risk. So what is unsystematic risk? Unsystematic risk is a risk that could be diversified, okay? Can diversify. But how do you diversify a unsystematic risk? By having a portfolio. Having a portfolio uh, of stocks, then it could be diversified, again, okay? or it could be reduced. Uh. So, what is really an unsystematic risk? So, this is basically firm-specific risk. Firm-specific risk, also known as industry risk. Again, okay? straightforward, very simple. Systematic versus unsystematic risk. Systematic is your market risk, cannot be diversified. Whereas unsystematic risk can be diversified. And uh, how do you diversify it? By having a portfolio of stocks. And this is usually known as firm-specific risk or industry risk. Okay, so that's question number one. So let's move on to question number two. So what is question number two asking us? Question number two, it's a, a factor model question. Okay, a researcher has determined that the two-factor model is appropriate to determine the return on the stock. The factors are the percentage change in GNP and an interest rate. GNP is expected growth, all right? GNP, expected growth, okay? Expected growth here is 3.6%, all right? And the interest rate is expected to be 3.1%, all right? So interest rate is 3.1%. A stock has a beta of 1.3 on the percentage change in GNP and a beta of 0.75 on the interest rate. Okay, so the GNP and the uh, the beta for GNP and interest rate has two different beta. So one is 1.3, another one is negative 0.75. So this is the beta here. The beta means risk. Huh? So beta for stock is 1.3. Beta for interest is negative 0.75. If the expected return on the stock, uh, expected return, this is 12%. Okay, expected return is 12%. What is the revised expected return on the stock if GNP actually grows by 3.2? Uh, so the expected return for GNP is only 3.2%. And this is 3.4%. So there's a difference here. That, uh, this is the uh, actual return, and this is the expected growth rate. Okay, this is expected. This is actual. So you know both of this. All right. So how do you fit this and count the? What is the formula to use for this? Uh, for this question. So the formula that you use is R equals to plus E. Okay, what is this? Uh, what is this M and what is this E stand? Uh, the E stands for here. So M is actually your systematic risk. Okay, and this is actually your unsystematic risk. All right. Okay, this is the uh, indicator. Okay. So now the question want you to find 
the uh, actual expected returns of the stock if it is 12 percent again what is the revised version the revised expected return so how do you do that well how do you do that okay so very simple so you convert this this is the base formula okay you convert this formula into portfolio calculations based on weightage okay so your expected return will be the new expected return will be your old expected return plus the beta of gnp multiplied by the difference of gnp okay plus with the beta of interest multiplied by the difference of interest all right look at here carefully this formula how do you want to write it so in this question you know your expected return is 12 percent so r is equals to 12 percent plus beta again the beta of your gnp is 1.3 percent 1.3 percent multiply by the difference so the difference how do you count you take the actual minus the expected what is the difference actual is 3.2 percent minus the uh, expected 3.6 percent then plus with your uh, beta of your interest beta of interest is negative 0 0.75 as you are aware times with the difference okay times with the difference we see the actual 3.4 minus the expected of 3.1 positive negative become negative okay so this figure will give you something like this 12% plus 1.3 times negative 0 0.4 plus plus minus become negative so this one become negative minus 0 0.75 multiplied by 0 0.3 so you will get 11.26 percent simple as that all right straightforward you get 11. percent Two six percent. Okay. So moving on now to the third question. Okay, question number three. All right, question number three here. The factor models again. Suppose the three factor models is appropriate to describe the return of a stock. Information about these three factors is presented in the following chart. So they show you the GDP, the inflation and also the interest rate again they give you the beta beta is 0 0.06 0. Uh, that's one zero. 0 0.006821 negative 0 0.9 negative 0 0.32 so what is the expected value uh, the expected value is 14.11 14.011 wait wait it's 14011 with the re here it's 14011 okay it's 14011 that's a comma inflation 2.8% and interest rate is 4.8% so the actual value uh, actual value Actual value is 13,982, 2.6% times with 4.6%. So this question, first of all, they want you to find what is the systematic risk of the stock return. The systematic risk. So they want you to find systematic risk. Take back the same formula just now. Plus M. Plus E. Okay, you want to find this systematic risk. All right. Okay. <coughs> so, how to find the systematic risk? All right. How to find the systematic risk? So, remember, your systematic risk is basically consists of all the portfolio above. All right. So, the beta of GNP times with the changes of GNP 
plus with the beta of inflation times with the changes of inflation and plus the beta of interest times with the changes of interest. Okay, so this is all your systematic risk. All right, this is all your systematic risk. GDP, inflation, and interest rate, all systematic risks. All right. Okay, so now what do you do? Fill in, fill in the forms. So the beta here will be 0 0.006821 multiplied by the GNP changes, all right, which is the actual value minus the expected value. 1392 minus 14011 plus with negative 0 0.9 times with 2.6 minus 2.8. Again, plus negative 0 0.32 times with. Hmm, 4.6 minus 4.8. So this will give you an end figure of negative 19.54%. Okay? All right. So your systematic risk portfolio of return is 19.54%. The return is 19.54%. Okay. So this is the systematic risk of the stock return. So what suppose, okay, part B, suppose an unexpected bad news about the firm was announced that, that announced that causes the stock price to drop by 1.1%. If the expected return on the stock is 12.8%, what is the total return on this stock? All right. So filling into the major uh, huge uh, formula again. Which formula we are talking about? This formula. Okay. They're talking about this formula. All right. So now they are telling you the stock has a uh, un unsystematic stock change of 1.1% now. All right. Why is it 1.1%? Because they tell you, okay, unexpected bad news about a firm was announced that causes the stock price to drop 1.1. So this is a firm specific risk. So this is your E. This one is dropped by negative 1.1%. So if the expected return on the stock is 12.8, so that means your expected return of stock is 12.8%. Uh, what is the new uh, total returns of these stocks? What's the new return of these stocks? So part B, you use this same formula. Okay, you fill in R equals to expected R, uh, new expected R, oh sorry, new expected round. Okay, R is equals to your and this is a new expected R equals to expected R plus with your systematic risk plus your unsystematic risk. So they tell you your expected risk now initially uh, expected return sorry is 12.8%. Plus M your calculated is negative 19.54. Okay, and plus negative 1.1. So this new figure gives you an answer of how much? Okay, 12.8 minus 19.54 minus 1.1. So that means minus 20.64. So this will give you a negative 7.84%. So the, expect, the total return of this stock will give you a negative 7.84%. Or in other words, it's making the losses. So that's what these questions are about. Very simple, very straightforward. Two calculations, straightforward calculation question are given to you, and a theory question in the first section there on systematic versus unsystematic risk. So hopefully you guys take some time to go through this video and understand the question for tutorial six. And please take care. See you next week, same time in the class. All right.